Hi everyone, this is Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes and in this video I'm going to show you how to perform a complete portrait edit in Capture 120 and specifically we will be focusing on skin retouch. As you know Capture One very recently got an update and now we have dedicated tools, dedicated brushes that can be used for skin retouch. So to check how these brushes work, I have picked quite a demanding portrait so we can see what can be done in Capture 120 with these new features, with these new brushes and what still requires jumping over to Photoshop. So let's take a look at the original image. So this is our starting point. I have picked this image to just check the possibilities of the new feature. This will be our starting point and we will be working towards this result. As you can see, this is still a raw file. I haven't cheated. I didn't jump to Photoshop. I've done all these corrections in Capture One. So this is the starting point and this is what we are are going to get at the end of this tutorial. Okay, so quite a lot of adjustments ahead. We will be working with the skin retouch, with the heel brush, we will be working on luminosity adjustments, we will be dodging and burning and we will be color grading. So quite a lot of work, let's get started. So let's first move over to the original image. This is the image before any adjustments. This is original raw file. So as the first step, I want to adjust color balance. Let's just zoom out. And if we take a look at this image, in terms of color temperature, I'm quite happy. I don't need to make this image cooler or warmer. I like the neutral tones. However, I don't like this greenish color cast that is visible here over the neck in the shadow area and here around the eyes. So I'm going to move over quickly to the exposure tab and here with the white balance tool, I will be working with the tint slider to add a little bit more of magenta to get rid of the greens. So I will be working with the arrows on my keyboard because I want to make a very little difference here with the numbers. So I'm going to just move my arrow upwards and that way I'm moving slider very precisely towards the right. This is already too much. So the value around 3.9 is fine. So this is before and this is after fixing the greenish color cast. So now having this issue out of our way, we can begin retouching the image. Let's just zoom in and I'm hitting Command B on my keyboard to get rid of the browser to have a little bit more space because we will be working at a quite a high zoom level when retouching skin. Okay, so let's begin. So all we need to do is to just select the heel brush here from the layers panel. And before in the previous versions of Capture One, you had to create a new heel layer. In Capture 120, you don't have to do this anymore. All you need to do is to just pick the brush and Capture One will create the source point automatically and it will create your heel layer automatically as well. So let's just check the brush settings. I'm right clicking on the image and here when it comes to opacity, I want to have it at 100. When it comes to flow, I want to have it quite a high value as well. So 85. When it comes to size, I will be adjusting it dynamically during working on the image. And let's have the last option selected for now, display arrows. Okay, so let's start working on our image. So I'm going to start here over the nose and all I need to do is to just paint over this imperfection. And as you can see, Capture One automatically created the source point and that way the imperfection got removed. If you move over for your brush from the viewer area, the, the arrows are disappearing. So we can continue working that way. Let's just paint over those spots that we want to heal. So most of the time, as you can see, Capture One does a quite a good job when it comes to sourcing these points, sourcing pixels that are next blended into 
the spot that we want to remove. There will be situations, however, when you have to adjust manually the source point. And sooner or later you will run in this sort of situation. So if you are bothered with these arrows, you can switch them off. So if you want to do this, you can right click on the image and untick this last option, display arrows, and that way you won't see the arrows. However, I think that seeing them is actually helpful because it gives you more control and you can readjust the source point manually. So you can continue working that way and it takes a bit of time. Of course, you need to be patient and you need to be precise. So working that way, you will be able to get rid of most of the points that you want to fix. So am I convinced that this is enough when it comes to skin retouch? I would say no. In terms of this image, I was able to achieve quite satisfying results. However, if I had something even more complex, more difficult, it would be much better to move over to Photoshop. So why am I showing you this? Why am I showing how to work with these brushes? So when you have images that are definitely too time consuming to be healed that way, it will be beneficial to move over to Photoshop. However, if you can spend something between 15 to 20 minutes and retouch difficult areas to clean the image that way, I would say this is still worth the time spent because you will be still working with a raw file. If you move over to Photoshop, if you perform skin retouch in Photoshop, either with dodging and burning or with the frequency separation, you will get smoother results. You will get better results, I would say. However, you will be losing all the data that is still available when you are working with a raw file. So I would say if you can get satisfying results with Capture One, stick to Capture One. So as you can see, working that way, you can get quite a nice results. So this is the stage before and after. And I want to show you one more thing because so far I was retouching very small elements, very tiny imperfections in the skin. However, this tool, the heel brush can be used to remove quite large elements in images as well. So I have already managed to get rid of this stripe when I was retouching this image before. And I want to show you how to do this. So all we need to do now is to just paint over the stripe. So this will be the area that we will heal. I'm going to paint slightly over the edge. So I will have more flexibility when it comes to blending this area. Capture One automatically picked the source point and this way I have removed the object. This time Capture One did quite a good job when creating automatically this source point. Most of the time when it comes to removing such a big elements and here when we are working with a human body, it will require some auto adjustment. So all you need to do is to just click on this little circle and readjust it. I'm not going to touch it because the result I have achieved is quite good. So this is before and this is the after. For the sake of this video, I will be not working towards super perfect results. I just want you to have the idea what can be done with this tool. So you can continue working that way and perfect further skin in your portrait. I'm going to pause now and jump to the stage where I have finished skin retouch with the heel brush. Okay, so this is the result I was able to achieve with the heel brush. So I have started with this raw file and after about 20 minutes, I was able to get to this stage. As you can see here, I have actually two heel layers. And here is one tip that I want to give you. Because when you are working with this brush, and if you want to go quite 
uh, deep into this retouch, if you want to perfect the skin, you will very quickly reach a stage when working further is quite confusing because there is so many of these arrows, there are so many of these source points. So I found this little hack that you can actually manually create another hill layer because when you have this layer selected and if you continue painting you will be still in this very first layer but you can add another hill layer and to do this you just need to move over to this plus and from here select new hill layer and then here you can continue working with your hill brush and you can spend as much time as you want on retouching the image. However, as I've mentioned before, it doesn't make any sense to spend one hour with this tool in Capture One because you can do this much faster in Photoshop. So the decision is up to you. I just want to show you that if you create more hill layers, it gets actually easier. So this is my first hill layer where I have performed the majority of the skin retouch. If I hit M, you can see the overlay. So I have retouched all these points and then I have created the second hill layer and here I have finished my skin retouch. So at this point we have cleaned the skin, we have performed the skin retouch with the heel brush. This is the starting point and this is what we have managed to achieve. Now as the next step I want to show you how you can combine Luma masks and negative clarity value to soften the skin. As you know we use clarity tool to add contrast in the mid-tones in our images. So let's create new field layer and I'm going to rename this layer to skin and let's move over and find our clarity tool. So I'm in the exposure tab and the clarity tool is sitting here at the bottom. So if I add positive values I will be adding contrast to the mid-tones in the image and I will be achieving quite a harsh texture visible here in the skin. So if I go in the opposite direction, if I introduce negative values to the clarity, you can see that I'm getting quite a nice result, but I don't want to have this effect applied over the whole image because the result is just awful. I just want to soften the skin locally in selected areas. And because in this particular image, I would like to soften the highlights. I would like to soften the skin in the brightest parts. I can very quickly create Luma mask that will include just the brightest area. And then I can just apply negative clarity value to these areas. So let's do this. Let's just select our layer and let's quickly hit on Luma range. So that way I will be creating the Luma mask. Let's tick display mask so we will see what we are doing and let's include the brightest tones and exclude mid tones and shadows. So when it comes to selecting the luminosity range I think something like this will work quite well and in case of this image, when we want to soften texture of the skin, I would recommend readjusting these values and creating more soft mask. So in, when it comes to sensitivity, I will go down with this slider to zero. So that way the mask is more soft, more generic, and I will increase the radius. So we can achieve softening of the skin in a very subtle way. So we can readjust this sliders. Okay, let's apply our mask. And now when we have this mask created, if we hit M, we will see the preview of the overlay. And let's just move over to clarity and let's apply negative clarity here to our highlights. We can zoom in so we will see what we are doing here. I just want to make these areas smoother, softer and make this skin texture a little bit less visible. OK, so let's apply negative clarity value to our image. So this is before, this is the after. It's quite a subtle change, but adding all these little adjustments 
to our layer stack will give us quite a big difference in the end. So this is before applying the Luma mask and after softening the highlights, the brightest areas in our image with negative clarity value. Having this super precise mask created with the Luma mask tool, I can now use it to brighten only this part in the image, to brighten only this Luma range. So let's switch off the overlay and let's work with curves. So I'm going to be working with Luma curve and I'm going to add a point in the middle of the line and push it very, very slightly upwards. So this will brighten those highlights and will make the skin even softer. So this is before and after correction that we performed on the skin layer. Okay, as a next step, I would like to adjust the eyes. So I'm going to add a new empty layer and I will be painting the mask manually with brush. So let's hit B on the keyboard. Let's adjust brush settings. So flow, I want to go a little bit lower and let's just paint. Let's maybe display the overlay and let's paint over this part in the eye. Okay, so something like this. And let's repeat this in the other eye. Okay, so having the mask created, we are going to switch off the overlay and move over to the HDR tab. And here we want to open up shadows. So I will be pushing the shadow slider. I think this is a little bit too much. We can always revisit this and readjust if this will be too strong effect. So this is before and this is after. We can open up blacks as well here. So before and after. Okay, let's zoom out and let's apply a bit of clarity as well. So we've been working with HDR. Let's now go to clarity and let's apply some clarity. This is actually darkening the eyes and just increasing the contrast in the midtones. So this is the eyes before and after adjustment. Let's just rename the layer to keep things tidy and organized. Okay, so this is before and this is the after. Okay, so at this point we have retouched the skin. However, the image overall looks quite flat and we are going to target this with a bit of dodging. Of course, you can do this in Photoshop. However, it can be done quite efficiently in Capture One as well. So let's create first a helper layer that will turn our image temporarily to black and white because it's much easier to dodge and burn, to apply dodging and burning on black and white image. So let's first create new field adjustment layer. Let's call it black and white. Remember, this will be our helper layer and let's go for saturation and let's just go all the way to negative 100. Let's now add two more layers, new field layer, and this will be our dodging. And let's add second new field layer and this will be our burning. Okay, so when it comes to dodging, let's find our curves. We will be working with Luma curve. Let's just create a point in the middle and let's push it upwards. When it comes to burning, let's create new point and let's push it downwards. So all we need to do now is to just invert those masks. So let's hit invert mask for burning as well, invert mask. And now we will be using the brush to paint and locally introduce these adjustments and that way we will be either brightening selected areas in the image or darkening. So let's start with dodging, we'll be brightening. So let's select the brush and let's check our brush settings. It's very important to keep flow at the very low value. So I will go for maybe four, opacity 100 is fine. Size we will be adjusting during the painting process. And when it comes to hardness, let's go for zero. 
So when you are dodging, you are working on making all these transitions in the image softer, more harmonious. I'm talking here about the transitions in terms of luminosity. So for example, when we are looking at the cheek here, we have this transition here between the bright part and dark part that is not as smooth as it could be, so we can work towards improving it. So I'm going to increase size of the brush a bit and I'm just going to paint over these darker areas. So by working that way, I'm making these darker spots a little bit brighter and making the transitions smoother. So if you hit M on your keyboard, you will see the mask that you are creating. You are seeing these areas that you have painted in and Similarly, as in case of working with the heel brush, this requires quite a lot of precision and patience. I'm going to pause now and jump to the stage where I have already finished dodging. Okay, so here we have our image with the dodging finished. So if I display the overlay, this is my mask. This is what I have affected with dodging. Let's just hide the overlay and let's see. So this is before and this is the after. So you can see that I have very quickly done both. I have applied some dodging to remove those darker lines to brighten a little bit the area under the eyes. Plus I have introduced stronger highlights in the hair. So this is what I have done with my dodging. So again, this is the mask and this is before and this is the after. So now we can get back to color. Let's just move over to our black and white layer and we can get back to our saturation that was initially set at zero and we can continue working on our portrait. Okay, so here at this point we have healed our image with the heal brush and we have performed some luminosity adjustments. Let's now add a little bit more contrast to the image because it's quite flat. So let's create another field adjustment layer and let's rename it. Let's call it luminosity. Okay, so here I'm going to be operating with curve. Let's just pull the tool out so we will be more precise here. I will be working with RGB curve because I don't mind adding a little bit more saturation to the colors. So we can help ourselves a bit with a ready preset here. So I'm going to click here and select contrast RGB. So that way I'm using the ready preset that is available in Capture One. Maybe I will reduce this point a little bit to make the highlights a little bit less strong, but the contrast that I have achieved is quite nice. So let's zoom out and let's just put our curve back. So the darks got a little bit too intense. Let's move over to the HDR tool and let's try to open the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to be working with this slider and this is way too much, something around maybe 14. So this is before, this is the after and let's maybe operate with the blacks. Here I will be using the keyboard something around three. I think this helps a little bit as well. Okay, and as a last step on this layer, I'm going to touch up the contrast slider in the exposure tool and move it towards the left because we've added quite a lot of contrast with the curves and with this, this is going to be this little nice softening touch. Okay, so on our luminosity layer, we've added contrast to the image and we've added saturation because we have used RGB curve to add contrast. If we were working with the Luma curve, we would be adding contrast without affecting saturation in the image. However, I don't mind making these colors a little bit more vibrant. So with this layer, we have achieved just that. We have just two more steps to finish this edit and the very next step 
is color grading. When I have started this edit, I've mentioned that I'm happy with the color temperature, with the neutral look. So now this is perfect occasion to work a little bit more, to add a little bit more color to the image. So I'm going to create a new field adjustment layer and let's just rename it to color. And we will be working with the easy color grading tool in Capture One, which is color balance tool. So let's move over to the color tab and let's just find our color balance. Here it is. Let's just pull it out and let's move back to our exposure tab because here I have my layers set to large size so I can see all of them at the same time. Here I would need to adjust this. Okay. So let's focus on our color balance tool. In general, my idea for this look is to make this image quite saturated and quite warm. So here we have complementary colors. We have this nice orangey warm tones, skin tones against this cyan in the background. So I want to make the skin tones warmer and I don't mind losing a little bit of those cyans because we are focusing on portrait here. The skin is the most important factor and I want to make it look as good as possible. So when it comes to shadows, I want to inject a little bit of orange in the shadows to warm it up. So something like this when it comes to saturation this is fine. And I'm going to use this slider towards the right to darken the shadows because apart from injecting specific tint into our image with this tool, you can as well affect luminosity ranges. So let's maybe move it a little bit towards the orange. So let's make the shadows a little bit darker. Okay, something like this is perfect. Let's now work on mid-tones. So here I'm going to be injecting similar tone. I'm going for this nice warm orangey tone that is making skin tones more saturated. So this is before, this is the after. Here I can make them just slightly brighter. I'm not going to be changing this value a lot. When it comes to highlights, I want to keep them neutral, but instead I will be working with the master tab here. So when it comes to master, I will be adding very similar color. So I will go for this very warm orangey tone, something around here. And when it comes to saturation, maybe this is a little bit too much. So I can go down and make it a little bit less strong. Okay, so this is the result we have achieved. This is before and this is the after. If this is too strong, you can either readjust those values here in the tool itself, or you can work with opacity value for the layer. So if this is too strong, you can maybe reduce this a little bit. I'm going now to very quickly focus on the background and make it a little bit smoother with the, the advanced color editor. So let's just very quickly add new field layer. Let's rename it to BCG for background. So let's jump very quickly to our color tab. And here I'm going to find color editor and we will be working actually with skin tone. So I will show you this very simple trick that can be very helpful when you want to make the background a little bit more smooth. Because I'm working here on the portrait and there is quite a lot of things going on in the background. We have this brighter elements, we have this highlights. So I can very, very quickly unify them with the skin tone tab in the color editor. So all I need to do is to just select the color picker. Just remember to have the layer selected. We are working on the background layer. So now skin tone, the color picker, and let's just sample anywhere here on those brightest areas in the background. And let's now make sure that the whole saturation range will be included in our color selection. So let's click here. So this is our selected color range that will be affected. 
So all we need to do now is to just manipulate with this last slider in the uniformity group with the lightness slider. So let's push it all the way to the right. And as you can see, this made those differences less visible. So now the background is more smooth. So this is very, very simple, very useful trick. And if we would like to adjust the color, we can maybe go for slightly stronger saturation and maybe you can make it brighter. Okay, so on this layer, we've been adjusting the background and now we can add a very last layer at the very top. And here we will add few more final touches. So here I will be focusing on sharpening the image because Capture One applies sharpening to the image in three stages. And now this is the middle stage. The first stage is when Capture One imports images from your memory card. It already applies a bit of sharpening. Now you can apply sharpening with the sharpening tool. And the third stage, the third step when it comes to applying sharpening is when you are outputting your images, when you are exporting your images to the selected format. So let's move over to our exposure tab and let's actually rename this layer to sharpen and let's quickly jump to the detail tab and here we can work with sharpening. Here it is very important to zoom to at least 100%, I should say to 100%, or if you are at the retina display as me in this case, it is helpful to look at the image at 200%. So when it comes to sharpening, I can say that less is more. Just try to make your image look clean and nice, but before overdoing. So here with this value of 300, we have these artifacts visible here. This can be easily fixed with halo suppression. So if I move this all the way to the right, this is fixing the issue. This is fixing the problem, but I don't think there is any point of moving further with sharpening. So this is before this is the after again before and after we can add a little bit more of clarity but with this i would be super careful because we've been spending quite a lot of time on softening the skin on retouching the skin and clarity is something that has to be applied with caution so we can apply a bit of clarity to the image and maybe we will work with inverted mask. Okay, so here this is our mask. Let's just invert the mask and let's apply our sharpening and clarity locally. So I will be quickly painting in the mask with the brush. So let's hit the B and let's go for flow, quite a high value, opacity and maybe a little bit harder. So I will be now painting over these areas in the image that I want to have sharper. Let's switch off the overlay and I will be avoiding obviously the skin. I will be avoiding the cheek. I will be avoiding any areas that we've been spending time softening. So definitely I would like to have these areas in the hair more sharp. I don't want to go near to the edge of the image. So let's just focus on sharpening the eyes, a little bit of the hair here and maybe a touch over there. So if I show you the overlay of the mask, this is the mask that I have created. Let's maybe add a little bit more here. The point is to avoid sharpening. The point is to avoid adding clarity to the skin. Let's zoom in and now we can check. So this is before applying sharpening and clarity and this is the after. As the very last touch, I would like to add some film grain to the image, some film grain simulation. So this can be found here under sharpening. So we have sharpening and film grain. I will be using maybe silver or tabular grain. Let's just compare. So with tabular, I have the value now 25. So I want to go a little bit higher than that. I think it doesn't work with tabular. Let's move back to silver rich. So this is before and this is the after. Adding film grain very nicely unifies texture in the image and adds this very nice final touch, this less digital look. 
Okay, so this is our final result and let's maybe just as the very last step, let's maybe go a little bit lower with saturation. So I'm going to jump back to my exposure tab and here in saturation, let's maybe do this on color layer and I'm just going to pull it slightly to the left to get a little bit more of this silverish look. Okay, so this is how I would personally approach editing portrait in Capture 120 and I must say that these new retouching tools, I'm talking here specifically about the heel brush that we have used to perform the skin retouch in this image. So this is when I switch off these layers. This is our starting point. This is what we have started with and this is the final result. So as you can see, these brushes can be used to retouch the skin. We can get quite efficient, quite successful results in a very short time. Of course, if you want to get a perfect skin, if you are working on a beauty retouch, you have to jump over to Photoshop. But if you are just working on a regular portrait, you can just stick to Capture 120 and with this new brush, this can be done easily. If you would like to learn more, you can visit my blog. I'm going to write a blog post on this. So over there, you will be able to see the detailed screenshots. I'm going to upload some high resolution screenshots and you will be able to see the before and after. I'm going to write as well in detail all the steps that I have performed during this edit. So link to the blog article will be in this video description below. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, if you would like to comment, please feel free to do so under this video in the comments area. And you can do this here on YouTube or on my blog. I'm going to add comments over there as well. So thanks again for watching. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes.